welcome one and all to this second year pre-university course. Dear student, the second year is the turning point of your life. So work hard and before switch over to your syllabus, please remember my three simple quotations. Number one, nothing is impossible in this world if you put your mind in it. Nothing is impossible in this world if you put your mind in it. Second, if you don't become sun in the sky, try to become lamp in your home. But be a lamp of yourself with the flame of your mind. Enlighten yourself. So myself, VM Gogi, I will switch over to syllabus. There are total 16 chapters are there. First unit is reproduction. This reproduction is composed of four chapters. Number one, reproduction in organism. Second, sexual reproduction in flowering plant. Third, human reproduction. Fourth is reproductive health. So don't prepare the matter just based on the, don't prepare the matter just based on the weightage because sometimes slight fluctuations may be noticed. First chapter, reproduction in organism carries five marks. Sexual reproduction in flowering plants will carry eight marks. Human reproduction, 7 marks. Reproductive health, 5 marks. Now, we'll move to first chapter. Reproduction in organism. Reproduction in organism. As you know already, living organisms follow a definite pattern of life cycle. All the living organisms follow a definite pattern of life cycle, such as birth, such as birth, growth, reproduction, senescence, and death. All the living organisms follow a definite pattern of life cycle, such as birth, growth, reproduction, senescence and death period from birth to natural death of an organism is called as life span period from birth to natural death of an organism is called as life span every organism has a specific average life span every organism has a specific average life span this means that all the living organisms will grow and live for a particular period of time. All the living organisms have an average specific lifespan. This means that every organism will grow and live for a specific period of time or a particular period of time. Now look over the list of organisms and their lifespan. Now look over the lifespan of the organisms various organisms with their lifespan. Mayfly one day, butterfly one to two weeks, fruit fly one month, housefly one to four month. Mayfly one day, <coughs> butterfly one to two weeks, fruit fly one month, housefly one to four months. So fruit fly is fruit fly is called as drosophila or the scientific name of the fruit fly is drosophila it is also called as cinderella of genetics or vinegar fly next is crow 15 years crow i hope that you know it is a social bird crow 15 years parrot 140 years mango 200 years pupa tree 2500 years Cow, 25 years, Lion, 25 years, Banana, 25 years, Dog, 16 to 18 years, Horse, 30 to 40 years. Now look over the list once again. Mayfly, one day, Butterfly, one to two weeks, Fruit fly, one month, Housefly, one to four month, Crow, 15 years, Parrot, 140 years, Mango 200 years, pupil tree 2500 years. 
Kau 25 years, Leon 25 years, Banana 25 years, Dog 16 to 18 years, Horse 30 to 40 years, Crocodile 60 years, Elephant 90 years, Tortoise 100 to 150 years, Crocodile 60 years, Elephant 90 years, Tortoise 100 to 150 years. I hope that you know. Elephant is one of the largest land living mammal. Elephant is one of the largest land living mammal. Rose 5 to 7 years, Banyan tree 200 years. Now we have come across the list of organisms with their lifespan. I would like to introduce one important statement. One important statement. Lifespan of the organism, lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. I'll prove you two simple example. One is crow and another one is <coughs> parrot. Lifespan of the crow and parrot is a little bit different, but even though. So, last line which I come across is lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Two examples are there. One is bird, another one is plants. In bird, example is crow and parrot. Second is tree, mango and pupil. Now look over the next matter, reproduction. Reproduction is a process by which an organism produces new individual of its own kind. Reproduction is a process by which an organism produces new individual of its own kind. But the process of reproduction is controlled by habitat. Process of reproduction is controlled by habitat. Process of reproduction is controlled by habitat. Internal physiology and genetic material. It includes both DNA and RNA. The process of reproduction is controlled by habitat, <coughs> internal physiology and genetic material. Genetic material includes both DNA and RNA. So reproduction will enable the continuity of the species generation after generation. Reproduction enable the continuity of the species generation after generation. Now look over the reproduction types. Reproduction are classified into two groups. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Reproduction are of two types. Asexual and sexual. Asexual reproduction is also called as uniparental reproduction because only one parent is involved. It is also called as a gamogenesis because gametes are not produced. It is also called as somatogenic reproduction because generally it occurs in the somatic cells or you can call it as a vegetative cells. Somatic cell or vegetative cells. <clears throat> right. Now look over first definition of asexual reproduction. Production of an offspring by a single parent. Production of an offspring by a single parent without formation and fusion of gamete is called as asexual reproduction. Production of an offspring by a single parent without formation and fusion of gamete is called as asexual reproduction. The individual which are produced through asexual reproduction is almost identical to their parents. The individual 
which are produced through asexual reproduction are almost identical to their parents. Therefore, the term clone, the term clone is used to describe such an individuals which are morphologically and genetically similar. The individual which are produced through asexual reproduction is almost identical to their parents. Hence the term clone is used to describe such an individuals which are morphologically and genetically similar. But asexual reproduction is generally noticed in the unicellular organisms and plants and animals with simple organization. Asexual reproduction is generally noticed in the unicellular organisms or single celled organisms and plants and animals with simple organization. Now look over the types of asexual reproduction. In members of Protista and Monera, the parental cell will undergo mitosis and produces daughter cell. In members of Kingdom Protista and Monera, parental cell will undergo division and produces daughter cells. Here, cell division itself is a means of reproduction. So the cell division which is involved is mitosis. Cell division which is involved here is mitosis. In members of Protista and Monera, parental cell will undergo division and produces daughter cells. So here, cell division itself is a means of reproduction. Now look over second type, it is fission. Under that there are two types are there, one is binary fission and second is multiple fission. Under fission, there are two types are there, one is binary fission, another one is multiple fission. In binary fission, mother cell will undergo division and produces two equal hollows. Mother cell will undergo division and produces two equal holes or you can call it as a cells. Mother cell undergo division and produces two equal holes or cells. Binary fission is noticed in amoeba. Binary fission is noticed in amoeba, euglena and paramecium. Amoeba, euglena and paramecium. Interesting point, amoeba will also show multiple fission. But before that, please remember one line, binary fission. In binary fission, nucleus divides first. In binary fission, nucleus divides first, then followed by that is cytoplasm. In binary fission, nucleus divides first, followed by that is cytoplasm. A motto multiple fission. So this is a picture of binary fission, a single amoeba where first the nucleus will undergo division followed by that is cytoplasm resulting in the formation of two daughter amoebas. In case of amoeba the division is irregular or binary fission is irregular. In case of euglena it is longitudinal but in case of paramecium it is transverse. So please remember this point for CET purpose. In case of amoeba binary fission is irregular or you can call it as a simple. In euglena it is longitudinal but in paramecium it is transverse. Next move to multiple fission. When the environment conditions are unfavorable Amoeba will withdraw its pseudopodias when the environmental conditions are unfavorable. Amoeba will withdraw its pseudopodias and secretes a three-layered hard covering known as cyst. Three-layered hard covering known as cyst. And this phenomenon is called as encystation. This phenomenon is called as encystation. As soon as the environmental conditions are favorable back once again, encysted amoeba will undergo multiple fission. Encysted amoeba will undergo multiple fission and produces pseudopodiospores or you can call it as a young amoebas. When the 
cyst will rupture when the cyst ruptures all the young amoebas are released into the surrounding media and this phenomena is called as sporulation we will repeat this matter amoeba will show both binary fission and multiple fission when the environmental conditions are unfavorable amoeba will withdraw its pseudopodia they are actually locomotory structure and secretes a three layered hard covering known as cyst this phenomena is called as encystation as soon as the environmental conditions are favorable back once again encysted amoeba will undergo multi fission and produces pseudopodiospores when the wall of the cyst ruptures all the amoebas are set free into the surrounding media that will develop into new endospores so this phenomena is called as sporulation amoto third type buddy and that buddy you are going to study two type the process of formation of new endospor from a small projection the process of formation of new endospor from a small projection called bud produced by the parental body is called as budding the process of formation of new endospor so from a small projection called bud arising on the parental body is called as budding but budding are of two types one is internal budding another one is external budding example for the external budding is yeast and hydra example for external budding is yeast and hydra in case of yeast or saccharomyces the division is unequal it produces a small bud gradually it will get detaches when it falls on a suitable substratum it will develop into new endospor internal budding is also called as endogenous or gemmules internal budding is also called as endogenous or gemmules it is composed of a group of undifferentiated cells it is composed of a group of undifferentiated cells undifferentiated means they are not distinguishable they will store the reserved material gemmule is composed of a group of undifferentiated cells with the stored material it is protected by spicules it is protected by spicule when the body will undergo destruction all the gemmules are set free and they will develop into new endospor please remember one point this gemmule is composed of totipotent cells this gemmule is composed of totipotent cells example is sponges spongy example for external budding is yeast and hydra example for internal budding is sponges next to last matter is spores under that they have put forward two examples for your syllabus zoospores and conidia zoospores are the microscopic motile structure microscopic means they are not visible to the naked eyes motile here the locomotor structures are flagella zoospores are the microscopic motile structures microscopic means they are not visible to the naked eyes motile means movable here the locomotor structures are flagella example it is noticed generally in fungi and algae it is noticed in fungi and algae last one is conidia they are the non motile spores produced by the conidio pores conidia are the non motile spores produced by the conidio pores example is asparagillus example is asparagillus previous class we have come across the definition of lifespan it is a period from birth to natural death of an organism followed by that i introduced a list of organisms with a lifespan 
while explaining the list of organisms with their lifespan, I put forward an important statement. Lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Lifespan of the organism is not necessarily correlated with their sizes. Under that, I put forward two beautiful examples. One is with respect to bird, second is with respect to plants. Under birds, we have come across crow and parrot. Lifespan of the crow is 15 years, parrot is 140 years. With respect to plant is concerned, mango 200 years, pupil tree is 2500 years. Followed by that, I put forward definition of reproduction. Then you have come across two important lines. One is the process of reproduction is controlled by habitat and internal physiology and even genetic material. So the process of reproduction will enable the continuity of the species generation after generation. Followed by that you have come across reproduction are of two types. Asexual reproduction and sexual reproduction. Under asexual reproduction, first I come across all the alternate names, definition, followed by that I covered binary fission, multiple fission, internal budding, external budding, zoospore, conidia. Followed by that I come across another type of asexual reproduction is fragmentation. Followed by that, so today I will switch over to the next matter, vegetative propagation. In vegetative propagation, any part of the plant body, it may be a root, stem, leaf, or it may be a bud. In vegetative propagation, any part of the plant body will give rise to new plant. In vegetative propagation or vegetative reproduction, any part of the plant body will give rise to new plant, such as it may be a root, or stem or leaf or bud. So in vegetative propagation, any part of the plant body will give rise to new plant. Under that, vegetative propagules, vegetative propagules, or you can call it as a units of vegetative propagation. Vegetative propagules, or you can call it as a unit of vegetative propagation. First year, I come across around 8 examples in chapter Morphology of Flowering Plant. Rhizome, Tuber, Bulb, Corn, Runner, Stolon, Offset, Sucker. So this year you are going to study two more extra matters. One is Bulbil and another one is Reproductive Leaf, Bryophyllum. So out of 10, only 5 you are going to study in detail in second year. One is first category, underground modification of the stem for three purposes. Underground modification of the stem for three purposes. Number one, storage of food. Second, vegetative propagation. Third is perination. Perination means it helps to overcome unfavorable environmental condition or adverse environmental condition. First category is an underground modification of the stem for three purposes. Rhizome, tuber, bulb, corn, storage of food, vegetative propagation and perination. Perination means it helps to overcome unfavorable environmental condition or adverse environmental condition. Second category is subaerial modification of the stem for vegetative propagation. Runner, stolon, offset, sucker. But in second year, you are going to study only offset. Two more important matters are there. Bulbil and reproductive leaf, bryophyllum. First look over rhizome. Rhizome is an horizontally growing rhizome is an horizontally growing not vertically it is an horizontally growing underground modification of the stem for three purposes now question arises in your mind how you are going to prove that it is a modified stem it is having clear nodes it is having clear nodes and internode you can easily notice even adventitious roots Back to QC first year. 
in chapter morphology of flowering plant you have come across adventitious roots if the root develops from the radical then it is called as a tap root if the root develop from any part of the plant body other than the radical is called as adventitious roots rhizom example is ginger turmeric ginger turmeric and banana three classic example for the rhizom is ginger turmeric and banana please remember it is an horizontally growing underground modification of the stem second is stem tuber example is potato stem tuber example is potato i hope that you know the difference between potato and sweet potato i am expecting that you know the difference between sweet potato and potato anybody so sweet potato is an underground modification of the adventitious roots for the storage of food sweet potato is an underground modification of the adventitious roots for the storage of food whereas potato is an underground modification of the stem for three purposes so look over here it is having clear notes it is having clear notes i am expecting that you have seen sugar cane node is the solid region node is the solid region from which the leaf arises node is the solid region from which the leaf arises so the distance between two node is called as inter node node is the solid region from which the leaf arises so the distance between two node is called as inter node potato is having a clear node potato is having a clear node known as ice this having a number of nodes known as ice this ice produces buds this ice bears one or more buds when these buds will come in contact with the damp soil when it will come in contact with the damp soil it produces roots and new plant look over i will repeat this matter please remember potato is an underground modification of the stem it has a number of nodes known as ice which bears one or more buds and this buds will come in contact with the damp soil it will develop into new plant or it produces roots and new plants more to next matter offset so this an subaerial modification of the stem runner stolon sucker offset so second year you are going to study only offset rest is not necessary offset under that example is icornia or terror of bengal or water hyacinth or it is also called as scourge of water body so subaerial modification of the stem for vegetative propagation under that you have to study in detail offset example is icornia it is also called as water hyacinth or terror of bengal or scourge of water bodies it is an exotic species it is an exotic species now question arises what is this exotic species indigenous means local exotic means it has migrated from the foreign countries exotic means it has migrated from the foreign countries actually water hyacinth is a native of amazon 
It is a native of Amazon Basin of South America. Water hyacinth is a native of Amazon Basin of South America, but it is introduced to India due to its beautiful flower and shape of leaf. Water hyacinth is a native of Amazon Basin of South America, but it is introduced to India due to its beautiful flower and shape of leaf. It will multiply through offset and cover almost all the space available in the water body within a short period. It will multiply through offset and cover the space available in the water body in a short period of time. So it is also called as terror of Bengal because it will drain out oxygen and kill fishes. Water hyacinth is also called as terror of Bengal because it will drain out the oxygen and kill fishes. It is also called as scourge of water bodies. Terror of Bengal is also called as scourge of water bodies because it is very difficult for you to get rid of this plant. It is very difficult for you to get rid of this plant. So that ends terror of Bengal. Next matter is bulbil and reproductive leaf bryophyllum. Bulbil and reproductive leaf bryophyllum. Now first look over bulbil. It is a fleshy bud. It is a fleshy bud which on falling down will develop into new individual. Bulbil is a fleshy bud which on falling down will develop into new individual. Example is agave. Classic example for the bulbil is agave. Next last one is reproductive leaf bryophyllum. Reproductive leaf bryophyllum. This notched margins of the leaf, notched margins of the leaf, notched margins of the leaf bears adventitious buds. Notched margins of the leaf bears adventitious buds. When these buds will come in contact with the damp soil, it will develop into new individual. So that ends vegetative propagation. Under vegetative propagation, I covered rhizome. Example is ginger and banana. Stem tuber. Example is potato. Offset. Example is terror of Bengal or water hyacinth or scourge of water bodies or icornia. Bulbil. Example is agave and reproductive leaf. Example is bryophyllum. As you know already, previously I covered vegetative propagation. Next, I will switch over to sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction is also called as biparental reproduction. Sexual reproduction is also called as biparental reproduction because two parents are involved in reproduction. As you know already, asexual reproduction is also called as uniparental reproduction because only one parent is involved. But here, sexual reproduction is also called as biparental reproduction because two parents are involved in reproduction, namely father and mother. Or instead of that, you can call it as a male and female. But don't get confused with the definition. Definition is little bit different. Definition is little bit different. It involves the formation of male and female gametes. It involves the formation of male and female gametes either by the same individual or different individuals of opposite sex. It involves 
the formation of male and the female gametes either by the same individual or different individuals of opposite sex so please don't get confused with the definition sexual reproduction is also called as biparental reproduction because two parents are involved in reproduction but definition it involves the formation of male and female gametes either by the same individual or different individuals of opposite sex as you know already all the living organism has to reach certain stage of growth and maturity before they can go for sexual reproduction living organism has to reach certain growth and maturity before they can go for sexual reproduction growth phase is also called as zoonal phase in case of animal alternate word which are used in case of plant is vegetative phase living organisms has to reach certain stage of growth and maturity before they can go for sexual reproduction so growth phase is also called as zoonal phase alternate word which is used with respect to plant is vegetative phase end of the growth phase is the beginning of reproductive phase end of the growth is the beginning of reproductive phase reproductive phase can be easily noticed in the angiosperms it can be easily noticed in the angiosperm when they come to produce flowers end of the growth phase is the beginning of reproductive phase reproductive phase can be easily noticed in the angiosperm or higher plants when they come to produce flowers under that i decided to provide you two common examples one is bamboo second is stropelanthus kuntiana before switch over to the example everybody which is the longest growing grass which is the longest growing grass no doubt the answer is bamboo bamboo is one of the longest growing grass it produces flower only once in their lifetime it produces flower only once in their lifetime generally after 50 to 100 years bamboo produces flower only once in their lifetime generally after 50 to 100 years another classical example is strobelanthus kuntiana it is commonly called as neela kuranji strobelanthus kuntiana is commonly called as neela kuranji it produces flower once in 12 years it produces flower once in 12 years generally it produces flower in the month of september to october Strobelanthus kuntiana is commonly called as neela kuranji it produces flower once in 12 years generally in the month of september to october mass flowering of this neela kuranji has converted large hilly tracts of karnataka kerala and tamil nadu into a blue color structures that will attract a number of tourists mass flowering of this strobelanthus kuntiana will convert large hilly tracts of karnataka kerala and tamil nadu into blue color structures that will attract a number of tourists so end of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence end of the vegetative phase is the beginning of reproductive phase end of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence phase during senescence lot of changes are noticed in the body so one example is slowing of metabolism end of the reproductive phase end of the reproductive phase is the beginning of end of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence during senescence lot of changes are noticed in the body including slowing of metabolism so you know already first year 
metabolism means some total chemical reactions it includes anabolism and catabolism slowing of metabolism come on to next categories of plants there are three types of plants are there annuals biennials and perennials annuals will complete their life cycle in one year annuals will complete their life cycle in one year or one season it will complete their life cycle in one year or one season biennials will complete their life cycle in two years perennials will live for many years in annual and biennial you can easily identify vegetative phase reproductive phase and senescent phase in annuals and biennials you can easily notice vegetative phase reproductive phase and senescent phase but it is very difficult for you to define these three phases in case of perennial plants perennial plants so now look over events in sexual reproduction events in sexual reproduction they are classified into three steps are pre fertilization events fertilization events and post fertilization events now look over events in sexual reproduction they are of three types pre fertilization fertilization and post fertilization in pre fertilization you are going to study gametogenesis cell division during gamete formation gamete transfer and the sexuality in organisms under pre fertilization events you are going to study gametogenesis cell division during gamete formation gamete transfer and the sexuality in organism of first look over gametogenesis the process formation of gamete is called as gametogenesis the process of formation of gamete is called as gametogenesis so it's a very simple definition no doubt it will carry one mark or probably one other standard definition process of formation of haploid gametes the process of formation of haploid gametes from diploid germ cells the process of formation of haploid gametes from diploid germ cell by meiosis by meiosis in gonad system you can mat mark click madam so after vegetative propagation or reproduction now look for the second type is sexual reproduction as you know previously reproduction are classified into two types asexual and sexual sexual reproduction is also called as biparental reproduction because two parents are involved in reproduction namely father and mother or instead of that you can also call it as a male and female now look over the definition it involves the formation of male and female gametes it involves the formation of male and the female gamete either by the same individual or different individual of opposite sex it involves the formation of male and the female gamete either by the same individual or different individuals of opposite sex so previously once i defined this life cycle living organisms follow a definite pattern of life cycle such as birth growth reproduction senescence and death so growth phase is also called as zoonotic phase or it is also called as vegetative phase the word zoonotic is generally applied to the animals the term vegetative is used in case of plants the end of the growth phase is the beginning of reproductive phase the end of growth phase is the beginning of reproductive phase 
reproductive phase can be easily noticed in the angiosperm or higher plant when they come to produce flower. I'll provide two classic example. Number one is bamboo. Second is strawberry lanthus kuntiyana. Bamboo is one of the longest to growing grass. It produces flower only once in their lifetime, generally after 50 to 100 years. Bamboo is one of the longest growing grass. It produces flower only once in their lifetime, generally around 50 to 100 years or after 50 to 100 years. Second example is Strobilanthus kuntiyana. It is commonly called as Nila Kuranji. It produces flower once in 12 years. Strobilanthus is commonly called as Nila Kuranji. It produces flower once in 12 years. Generally, it produces flower in the month of September to October. It produces flower during September to October. Mass flowering of the strobilanthus has converted hilly tracts of Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu into a blue color structures that will attract a number of tourists. End of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence phase. End of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence. During senescence, lot of changes are noticed in the body, including slowing of metabolism. End of the reproductive phase is the beginning of senescence. During senescence, lot of changes occurs in the body, including slowing of metabolism. Slowing of metabolism. Now look over three types of plants. One is animals. Second is biennials. Third is perennials. Animals complete their life cycle in one season or one year. Animals complete their life cycle in one year or one season. But biennials will complete their life cycle in two years. Perennials will live for many years or more than two years. In animal and biennial, you can easily identify vegetative phase, reproductive phase and the senescent phase. But in perennials, it is very difficult for you to define these three phases. It may be a plant or it may be an animal. Hormones are held responsible for the transition between these three phases. It may be a plant or it may be an animal. Hormones are held responsible for the transition between these three phases. So now look over few more technical terms. Cyclic changes which occur in the female primate is called as menstrual cycle. Cyclic changes which occur in female primate during reproduction is called as menstrual cycle. Primates include apes, monkeys and human beings. Apes, monkeys and human beings. Cyclic changes which occur in non-primate during reproduction is called as estrus cycle. It includes cows, lion, rats, dogs, etc. Under this primate, there are two groups are there. One is seasonal breeders, another one is continuous breeders. In seasonal breeders, MC is noticed only during favorable season. In seasonal breeders, menstrual cycle is noticed only during favorable season. But whereas in case of continuous breeders, they are active throughout their reproductive time. They are active throughout their reproductive time.